I've got quite the collection of four terabyte T705 SSDs from Crucial. And yeah, these came from Micro Center. I had to buy these for like legitimate project reasons. What do you do with 16 terabytes of flash? How do you even get this connected? Well, most of the time you're gonna want to use a PCIe bifurcation card and your motherboard also has to support it. So you have to have a, a, a PCIe card basically that'll hold a bunch of M.2s. Well, IC dock to the rescue again. This is IC dock's four bay X16 adapter card. And this was actually cooler than I thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna take a look at it. This is the MB204MPB. This is a PCIe card that is designed for motherboards that support PCIe bifurcation, but this thing takes maintenance to a whole new level. Let's take a closer look. Now, if you're into building workstations, and you follow this channel for a while, you know that I've covered a lot of other IC Doc products in the past. Whether you're building a small server or a specialty server or a workstation, and you want something like removable U.2 drives, or you want to build an array of U.2, or you're adding Optane where it doesn't belong. IC Doc is the physical connection for when I added Optane to Threadripper. It's like an Intel Optane product running on AMD stuff. It's fine, it's just PCIe. The IC Doc not only provides a connection, it provides a connection in style. Not this particular one, but the other IC Doc stuff I've covered in the past. Your motherboard still has to support the bifurcation, as I said, so you have to be able to turn that X16 slot into four physical slots. But check out this PCIe card. It has four bays on top. Now technically M.2 is not hot swap, so this is not a hot swap adapter, but this is designed for servers and workstations. And so behind me, I've actually got set up my Falcon Northwest 56 core Xeon workstation, as well as an AMD Epic Turin server that I've put together. Now the Turin server is based on the new F CPU, 64 cores, five gigahertz. This is the fastest clock speed we've ever had in a server. And cause I'm kind of DIYing this, I need some, uh, some connectivity. It's in a Silverstone case. Silverstone has options for adding hot swap and everything else, but again, M.2, get the M.2 option. This is another bay from IC Doc. This is the MB021VP that I've used in the past in several builds. It's basically an eject button. This goes in a three and a half inch drive slot. And then you plug the drive in like that and you're good to go. And this will work with even 15 millimeter U.2 drives. The problem is that those T705s, so I've got the, the IC Doc M.2 to U.2 adapter, which theoretically this makes it physically hot plug for M.2. So those T705s, it's like, oh, all of a sudden we can use those in server. Yes, you can use those in servers, assuming that you get something that is Gen 5 compatible. But the problem is when you start stringing Gen 5 devices into adapters like this, so you're, your M.2 goes in here, and then the heat sink goes on, and it is quite a heat sink, and then this will slide into your U.2 bay. The problem is that when you've got these Gen 5 drives and you've got a lot of adapters, you're potentially introducing a lot of errors or connectivity, or it's like, is the drive okay, or is it actually something with all the interconnects and the adapters? Whereas with this PCIe adapter, it's basically native. That is a much more native connection than when you're doing something like this. This will work in a pinch. This isn't really recommended for enterprise use at the highest end, but I've had several of these in use with Samsung 990s for like a database server where I've got you know eight of these in an array and it's part of a cluster. So I'm not really worried if it's not 17 nines of uptime reliability. That's worked really well. But in this video, I really just wanna mount those M.2s directly onto a PCIe carrier because that is direct, that is going to be more reliable, and this adapter card from IC Doc is designed explicitly for Gen 5. Let's take a closer look. So in addition to the card that you get in the box, you also get these carriers, and these carriers is part plastic and part aluminum. And the aluminum part, it comes with heat pads and everything else, and this is designed to hold up to 2280 M.2. Then you end up this, with this fairly elaborate spring-loaded contraption, which then slides into the card. So basically you go in your BIOS, you set the option, you install the card, and then boom, you're good to go. We just gotta do that three more times. So what's it like actually running a workstation with 16 terabytes of storage for a couple of weeks now? Well, testing Linux and Windows very different experiences. So for Windows, 
Our Falcon Northwest system is based around the Sapphire Rapids CPU, Intel Sapphire Rapids, and that also supports VROC. Now, VROC on Windows is actually really interesting, virtual rate on chip. The idea is that Intel has done a lot of work to try to offload as much of the CPU software RAID processing as possible to the parts of the CPU that accelerate those operations. Real world, what that means is that bypasses a lot of Windows cruft. But on Linux, it's basically the same as Linux MD. So it's not really accurate to say that it's the same facility as Linux MD, but on Windows, but it is functionally compatible, meaning that I can have a volume that is mountable on both Linux and Windows via the VROC machinery and the VROC mailbox and special device and all of that stuff works exactly as it should. It's able to do its consistency, RAID 5, all that works exactly the way that you would expect, which is awesome. You need a common file system between Windows and Linux, but this is useful for getting apples to apples comparison numbers between the platforms you see. I also tested with uh, just creating a software volume in Windows. That is the least performance. So if you're on the Intel platform, it's worth getting a VROC key and doing that uh, for Windows. For Linux, you can run Linux MD. The performance of VROC and Linux MD uh, on, you know, under Linux is very similar. It's basically identical at this point, but it is functionally a little different. There's a couple of things that... Um, well, one of the big things that VROC does is it changes the way that the PCIe devices are enumerated, which is useful for a Linux MD. Uh, and there's a couple of little minor performance tweaks. So it's slightly more stable and it's slightly better in VROC mode than Linux MD mode, but Linux MD doesn't require a key. So that is, uh, that is neither here nor there. It's a delightful hardware experience now that I've got an IC doc module to be able to mix and match my M.2. Each one of them is four terabytes. Each one of them can manage you know, 16 gigabytes per second. But even with that, you know, Crystal Dismark, my software performance numbers here, we top out at about 35.9 gigabytes per second. So these are actually worst case scenario numbers in terms of performance. The other thing that you have to keep in mind when you have a RAID volume like this is that things that are Q depth one, where you can't have a lot of threads, there's not really an easy way for one thread to keep devices this fast engaged across the whole platform. That's the other reason I went with the Xeon X for this part of the thing is because I could overclock the bejesus out of it. Now something interesting happened when I switched platforms to Turin. Turin is a server platform, Zen 5. Zen 4, uh, Zen 4 is not going to do much for us here. Zen, Zen 4 on the desktop is like, why don't you test Zen 4 like a 9950X? This kind of a setup does not make sense for a 9950X because the PCIe Gen 5 storage is so fast, you wouldn't have room for a GPU. Look, 40 gigabytes per second on an unoptimized platform, and that is largely owing to uh, operating system overhead. Main memory bandwidth on a dual channel DDR5 platform is somewhere between 90 and 115 gigabytes per second. So our storage is on the order of as fast as main memory, which is insane. The CPU juggling that volume of data is not going to have room to do anything else. And it doesn't have the PCIe lanes to do anything else, like run your graphics card. So 16 lanes is not enough if you want to run this much storage. You could do two, like one to two, that would be fine. But yeah, four, you're going to, you're going to need a workstation. You're going to need that Threadripper. You're going to need that Sapphire Rapids workstation. And chances are you're going to need Linux. This is also a really interesting thing. Workstations, the higher in the workstation, the more likely it is to be running Linux. Welcome to 2025, I guess. Yay, Linux. All right. Woo. The biggest improvement, if you do decide to go VROC, a random 4K score, 300 or 3,017 microseconds. That's not fabulous because a single drive is on the order of about 100. That's the software overhead. Linux MD, you're looking at 400 to 600, give or take. VROC is like 390 to 420, 450. It's a little more consistent, give or take. Turin is also pretty consistent, but you'll need to tune your Linux kernel so that you give priority to IO. You can actually use Tune D to set, you know, throughput performance as your performance profile, and then your NVMe will always be fast. There's, there's a whole 
thing you get into with like power budget and juggling your power budget and it's like oh i don't have as much performance for boosting my cores or as much power budget for boosting my cores as i do when i'm running the io at full tilt it's like yeah that's basically a thing but the ic doc the ic doc solution fabulous in server and workstation contexts with good compatibility across a bunch of different motherboards so that is delightful if you have an application or a test or something that I can run to see something interesting for you, reach out on the forum at me and let me know that, you know, maybe we can set it up on this and see if it speeds something up dramatically. Uh, about the best thing I can report from a gaming scenario standpoint is loading the levels in flight sim. Really nice. That's about it. Most like game workloads, it doesn't really matter. This is 100% a workstation kind of a thing and you're not even really gonna it doesn't make sense to use this on a desktop part it's gonna take lots of pcie lanes and lots of memory channels and even this is the each one of these m.2 being able to do 16 gigabytes per second you really should be using an eight memory channel platform i know intel has a four memory channel platform i know there's trx 50 for threadripper but eight memory channels I actually populated eight memory channels when your storage is this fast good lord Crucial T705 and the IC Dock. All right, I'm going to go play with this now. This is exciting. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.